Hey, it's Niall, and today we're going to talk a little bit about numerology. Now, what is numerology? Well, according to this post on Instagram by numerologist.com, numerology is the belief in the divine relationship between a number and coinciding events. And it analyzes the combinations of the letters in your name and date of birth to give clues as to your strengths and weaknesses, motivations, natural talents, and life purpose. The information numerology provides can guide you in the direction you were born to take. If you shift your life so that it is more in line with your numerology chart, things will start to fall naturally into place and you may find the happiness you have been seeking. Now I first came across this neurologist.com when a friend of mine sent me a link to a free personalized numerology report and I clicked the link, I ended up on this page and I got curious so I decided to dive in and learn a bit more. Now numerologist.com, they seem pretty big, they seem pretty popular. Over 2 million abundant thinkers trust numerologists to find and stay on life path. They have 750,000 likes on their Facebook page, they have 129,000 followers on Instagram. Now I'm a little skeptical of this whole thing but I'm going to take a few minutes to go through this free personalized numerology report and see what kind of results I get. Holy shit that's that's pretty impressive that's wow that's um that's freakishly accurate. I mean, things they got right about me, they said, You're artistic and search for inspiration in everything you do. You are resilient and willing to step outside your comfort zone. Your laid-back and happy-go-lucky nature makes you very easy to be around, always willing to inject humor and words of wisdom into any situation. You get easily frustrated by delays or inaction and often take on more work in order to compensate. You have a strong calling to be an entrepreneur. You very much dislike being micromanaged and refuse to play second fiddle because you're so determined and ambitious. Ambitious, you deeply treasure your independence. I believe you are diligent, hardworking, and not at all lazy. You tend not to delegate responsibility to those around you, but rather do things on your own. You're not machismo or aggressive, but you are far from a pushover. I mean, that's me right there. That's, that's me. I mean, how could they know all that stuff? That's incredible. And obviously, I'm not the only one who feels that way because look, you have these video testimonials, people saying stuff like, I'm blown away. And I'm really amazed at the results. I couldn't believe how much information was in this reading. Every single thing that I read was so true. I don't usually buy into this sort of stuff, but it feels so real. And loads of people have commented on this report saying things like, holy shit, your prediction is so accurate, perfect so far. It was like you knew me everything you said was right on the money exactly on point on point pretty much on point amazing just wow awesome so accurate 100 accurate quite accurate i would give a hundred percent on that a 10 on 10 all prediction are correct that was absolutely insane this is almost scary how totally spot on so yeah i mean obviously this is impressive stuff everybody's getting really accurate results. There must be something to this numerology thing. But let me not get too excited here because I've read enough about cognitive biases and pseudoscience to know that this might not all be quite as it seems. So what I'm gonna do is I'll go back through my report, right? I'll do the whole thing again. And this time I'm actually gonna write down the things they get right, the things that are maybe a little fuzzy, and then the things they got wrong. And we'll do a little analytical report and see how it shakes out. All right, so these are my results. What I did is I went through everything they said about me and I organized it into three different sections. So I have the hits, so the stuff they got right. I have a middle column there where the things they said were just too subjective or too general, so they could apply to anyone or some people would say they describe me, some people would say they don't. And then I have the stuff that just seemed to be a complete miss. And when you tally everything up there, I had like 16 hits, I had 59 two subjective general and I had seven misses. Now even this, breaking it down like this, it's kind of fuzzy because you can even see like in the hits I say you're artistic. I mean yes I am but most people are artistic right? They also say things like because you're so determined and ambitious. A lot of people like to think of themselves as determined and ambitious. You deeply treasure your independence. 
I think most people do that. So I probably could have put more into the middle column there, but I was trying to be fair, trying to be fair, trying to give them the benefit of the doubt. But you can see the type of stuff that I put in subjective in general. You believe that life is too short to be wasted in anger or frustration. You're always ready to jump at an opportunity to get ahead. The kiss of death for you is boredom or monotony. Pretty much everything there is just, it could be applied to anybody, or it's things that we like to believe about ourselves, even if it's not really true. You are chock full of charm, popularity, and wit. And then for the misses, they said you have unparalleled creativity. Really? Unparalleled? I'm not that creative. There's more creative people than me. You are a born leader. I don't think so. I was the shyest person I knew when I was a teenager. There's a part where they ask you to put in your marriage status. Marriage or in a committed relationship is the same selection. I'm in a committed relationship, I'm not married, but they took that to mean, I guess, I'm married, so they went off on a big tangent. Your wife has been your counterpart, your twin flame, your soulmate. I believe marriage was the most important decision you've made so far in your life. Uh, you think if numerology was really accurate, they would know that I'm not married you will have no trouble overcoming financial debt. I'm uh, not in financial debt. I've never been in financial debt. You're the life of the party. No. I feel that most of your energy is spent on creating cash flow and supporting your family. I don't have a family. I have a girlfriend. Does that count? And this entire report, it, it's based on three numbers that they calculate for you. So let's run through those quickly. The most important number in your numerology chart is your life path. It reveals your most fulfilling life direction and the major lessons you're here to learn. It highlights the specific opportunities and challenges you'll encounter and your unique personality traits that will help you on your journey. Your life path is calculated by simply adding up the digits of your date of birth. Right, so that means that everybody born on the same day as me, 16th of March 1982, would have the same life path number. But I looked it up and there are 360,000 people born every day on this planet. Probably back in 1980s it was a bit lower. But that's a lot of people born each day and so everyone born on a particular day would have the same life path number. It just seems unlikely that one number would give you insight into how all their lives would turn out. The second of the three numbers they calculate is your expression number. Your expression number produces a highly potent and accurate profile of who you are and the magic you put out into the world. It reveals the innate gifts you were born with and predicts your ultimate potential. Your expression number is calculated by adding up all the digits that correspond to the letters of your birth name using the Pythagorean alphabet. They're saying the expression number is based on the name of the person and that will tell you a lot about their personality. Hmm, that sounds a little suspicious. I mean, look, here's a whole bunch of people on Facebook with the exact same name as me. Do you think we'd all have the same personality? I don't know, that seems a little far-fetched. The third number they give you is your soul urge number. Your soul urge, also called your heart's desire, shows what your soul needs to grow and evolve in life and relationships. Like your expression number, it's derived from assigning numerical values to the letters of your full birth name. Except, in the case of your soul urge, you look only at the vowels. Only at the vowels. Consonants are pronounced with sharp edges and have a definitive beginning or end. They represent your public personality and the traits you outwardly share with the world. On the other hand, vowels are pronounced from free-flowing breath and have softer edges. Vowels have softer sounds? Really? What about R, S, F? Those are quite soft, right? Compared to like K and D and that kind of thing. You know what we might do actually? Because when you hear this stuff about yourself, it's very believable, right? We all want to hear good things about ourselves and all of this is like positive, amazing stuff. You're a warm, generous, and charismatic person. You're a managerial and organizational genius with strong intellect and determination. But I bet we can be more objective and see if this is really accurate if we run the report for other people. So who'd be a good person to try? Let me think. Oh, I know. Adolf Hitler. Actually, wait a minute. Um, he's dead. Are you, can you do this with dead people? Most certainly, as long as you know their birth name and birth date, all the rules still apply. Perfect. Ooh, but I did some extra Googling just to make sure all the information we're putting in is accurate so we can get the most accurate information back. And you're supposed to use the name on the person's birth certificate. And I found a copy of Hitler's birth certificate and his name is spelt Adolphus. So we're gonna put in Adolphus Hitler and see what we get. I would expect that like, if you know, if numerology is real, that they would tell me that, hey, Adolphus, you're uh, an evil son of a bitch and um, you'd be better off killing yourself. Something along those lines. Your soul urge number is six. You are a true humanitarian. Oh. Your sense of responsibility is rarely outmatched and it shows clearly in your love of others 
and willingness to do whatever it takes to help someone in need, whether it be a friend or a complete stranger. Either Adolphus was very, very misunderstood, or the history books are very, very wrong. You are a great lover of home and family, and seek to make peace rather than disturb it. You are full of love. You have an innate sense of beauty, harmony, and compassion. It's starting to look a little less accurate now, isn't it? Maybe I was a fluke, though. I mean... Hitler was born in the 1800s and I had to hack the date to get his proper date of birth in there. So let's try someone a bit more recent. Fred West. English serial killer who committed at least 12 murders, raped and murdered a bunch of his children. Just not a nice dude. He killed himself in 1995, but if he was still alive today, he'd only be in his 70s. So yeah, let's do that. Hi, Frederick. Thanks for requesting your free numerology reading here at numerologist.com. Your greatest gift is your intuition and the way you use it to inspire and empower others. This harmony will inspire more creativity in those around you and create more connection, happiness, and success in all you do. Wow. This unique perspective and open expression is the key to your success, so keep it up. Yes, Fred, keep it up. Keep up all that raping and murdering. You have a strong sense of responsibility and are the one person everyone turns to for help. You are a great lover of home and family. You are well-groomed, well-dressed, and well-liked. Repulsed by Fred's unkempt appearance, the juice he was a tramp. Health-wise, I think you're in great shape. Continue to get yearly checkups from your doctor and I sense that you'll live for quite a few more years, even decades. You'd think they know that he was dead. Based on the date, based on the name, you'd think they'd know he killed himself back in 1995. You're a true survivor. But you know what, let's do someone who's still alive. How about, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying this person is similar to Hitler or Fred West, but how, how about we, we, we try Donald Trump? America, fuck yeah! Donald, your life path number is a four, and this tells me a lot about you. Oh my god, four? Trump is president of the United States? A presidential term is four years? His life path number is four? It makes so much sense! Your success in life is not due to luck. It comes from your honesty and commitment to excellence. I don't think your past was easy. I don't think you were born eating from a silver spoon. Trump is the beneficiary of several trust funds set up by his father and paternal grandmother beginning in 1949. Whoops. You must make a concerted effort to not come across too overbearing or uncompromising. Wow, that's actually good advice. <laughs> Donald, I get the sense that over the last few years especially, you've become pretty set in your ways. So one thing that's become clear here is anyone that's older than a certain age, they give them the exact same spiel. I get, I get the feeling, feeling that, that you're spending a lot of time wondering about your future. How many years do I have left? Are we financially stable? Can we continue to live the life we're accustomed to? Is that all there is? Probably try to fight the biological clock by acting young at heart and paying more attention to your health. My guess is that you may become offended when you get offered a senior's discount right off the bat. Every now and then it comes to your attention that you are the oldest person in the room and that makes you feel a bit vulnerable. Especially when one of the first things you do each morning is read the obituary call. All this stuff they just apply to any person over a certain age because it's more than likely going to be true. While you know your wife better than anyone, I get the sense that she is probably the most difficult person to shop for because she's already got everything she wants. Yet, if you don't get her a thoughtful gift on her birthday or your anniversary, she can get a bit cranky. Not to mention what happens when you forget them all together. It says the exact same thing for the wife of Donald Trump, the wife of Frederick West, and the wife of Adolf Hitler. Now, I don't know about you, but I can't really see how that same description applies to those three women. I believe that family is most important to you, but I feel a distance between you and another close family member. It could be a child, a parent, or sibling. My advice to you would be to resolve any past misunderstandings and enjoy each day as it comes. Yeah, that's, that's good advice for everybody. Continue to push yourself to experience new things as that will keep you young and vibrant. Okay, so I think you get the picture. It's super general. They kind of put people into different categories. People can self-select and then they throw out these generalizations that people feel are specific because there's a good chance that they are, right? If you're above a certain age, if you're a certain gender, if you're married, if you're not married, there's certain things that are gonna to apply to you more than others. It's just an educated guess, really. And so what I think is really going on here and why so many people fall for this numerology type of stuff is it's, it's cognitive biases, right? It's, our brains are stupid. They're easily tricked. What I wanna do is quickly run through some of the main cognitive biases that are exploited by numerology. First one is the Barnum effect, whereby individuals give high accuracy ratings to descriptions of their personality that supposedly are tailored specifically to them, that are in fact vague in general enough to apply to a wide variety of people. You are gifted with uncommonly sound common sense, yep. 
While in many aspects 22 is the most promising number, it is also the most difficult to live up to. Yep, I know that feeling too. Apparently my birthday number 13 gives me a great love of family, tradition and community. Next one is the Texas sharpshooter fallacy. Often arises when a person has a large amount of data at his or her disposal, but only focuses on a small subset of that data. When I actually broke down all the things they said about me in that report, I could see way more clearly that not much of it actually applied to me, that quite a lot of it was very general. But it's hard to see that at first glance. We're way more likely to just focus on a subset of the data, especially the stuff we find most compelling. Another cognitive bias at work here with numerology, we're gonna actually go into the Instagram for numerologist.com and have a look at this, because you see they often post numbers, like 444, 1010, 999, 333, 14. And if you go into the comments for any of these, you're gonna see people saying stuff like, I've been seeing 77 almost every day for three months, what does this mean? I'm seeing 55 and 5555, so often that I can't miss it. My license plate has 444. I see it all the time. 444, 555 follows me everywhere. On occasion, 111 and 1212. What does this mean? Pretty much all magic numbers I can think of that have four digits have been following me everywhere lately. I see 444 for the past two years every day. I always see 333 always. Time is now 333. Always I see these numbers. Lately it's almost every day. So again, this is a cognitive bias. It's known as the frequency illusion or the badder mainhof phenomenon. Your brain seems to be excited by the fact that you've learned something new and selective attention occurs. Your brain subconsciously thinks, hey, that's awesome. I'm gonna look for that thing without actually thinking about it. So now that you're looking for it, you find it, and to make it all the more powerful, confirmation bias occurs after seeing it even once or twice. In other words, you start agreeing with yourself that, yup, you're definitely seeing it more. And the classic example of that is you're thinking of buying a new car, you have a specific type of car in mind, and what do you know? You start seeing that car everywhere. And the last cognitive bias I want to get into here is one called pattern seeking. So we humans are pattern seeking storytelling animals. Michael Shermer wrote a book on this topic called Why People Believe Weird Things. He calls this effect patternicity. We find meaningful patterns in meaningless noise. And here's a really interesting study from 2008. Lacking control increases illusory pattern perception. And what they did in this study is they basically gave people a lot of data to do with the stock market, uh, blurry images, that kind of stuff. And there was no patterns in it, but they asked people if they could find patterns in that data. A lot of people did find patterns in the data, and it turns out that the people who were more likely to see patterns that weren't actually there, they were the people who were made to feel like they weren't in control, who were made to feel more uncertain. And to give you a classic example of seeing a pattern that's not actually there, you can do a Google image search of Jesus on a dog's butt, and well, there you go. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So I hope you see what I'm getting at there. Basically, numerology doesn't seem to be a real thing, but we are susceptible to it. We like to believe it because of our cognitive biases, because of our broken brains. We're not that smart, unfortunately, and so we easily believe, we want to believe this kind of stuff. You're likely to achieve success more easily than anyone else. Now, before we wrap up this video, I want to address two potential, two likely criticisms I know I'm going to get. And the first is, what's the harm? Right, what's the harm in numerology? It makes people feel better about their lives, it gives them some comfort. Why are you criticizing it? It's not doing anybody any harm. Well, I disagree. If you go to the terms of use page for this site, numerologist.com, you read in big capital letters, numerologist.com provides numerology reading services for entertainment purposes only. The information contained on the website or in any email or materials received from the website is not guaranteed in any way way. But then if you go to the about page on numerology.com, you find this kind of stuff. It is our intention to provide you with the most accurate, clear, and trusted information available. With every article, resource, podcast, and video we ask, is this information valuable for our community? Does it come from trustworthy sources? Does it align with our intention to support the integrity of our readers? So on one hand, they're saying, hey, all this is entertainment. Don't take it seriously. But that's on one little part of their website. And then everywhere else, they're trying to convince you, they're telling you that this is all serious, this is all based on mathematics, and if you follow this kind of stuff, it will improve your life immeasurably. And this insight is sure to bring you immeasurable rewards. Now going back to that study I mentioned earlier, there is something in there that says illusory pattern perception may not be entirely maladaptive. If pattern perception helps an individual regain a sense of control, the very act of perceiving a pattern, even an illusory one, so one that's not there, 
it may be enough to soothe this adverse state, decreasing depression, learned helplessness, creating confidence and increasing agency. So yeah, I mean, numerology, it can be helpful to some people, but there are some legitimate tools out there that can help people that don't require them to believe in some mystical, supernatural, numerical, spiritual connection. There's something like cognitive behavioral therapy. I mean, that's gonna help a lot more people without misleading them or making them believe crazy shit. And I mean, let's be real here. This whole numerology report thing, it's basically a big sales pitch. At the end of the whole thing, they ask you to buy a report for $37 so they can tell you some more super general stuff that you're gonna think is specific to you. And they even go so far, and this is the part that really drove me crazy and made me realize that this is all complete bullshit. They even go so far as to offering you a bonus guide called Decoding Your Telephone Number. This report shows you how to decode and analyze the hidden meaning of your phone number or the phone number of anyone you meet considering doing business with or pursue a new relationship with. I mean, that's just ridiculous. Date of birth, okay, your name, okay, but your phone number? I've had like seven different phone numbers in the last years. I've traveled around to different countries. Which of those phone numbers will tell me about the real me? And it's also harmful in that it's getting people to spend money on this stuff, right? I mean, they want you to buy this report for $37. And what did that study say? It said that people who have little sense of control in their lives are more likely to see patterns. So they're more likely to be drawn to something like numerology, to fall for this stuff. People who don't have much sense of control in their lives, who are those type of people? They're generally poor people. They can't afford to be spending $37 on this bullshit. And you can see that in the Facebook comments. You have all these people saying, oh, that is too much money. I just got laid off. I believe in this, but I don't have a dime to my name. Do wish it was possible. So accurate, but I have unemployed. So sorry, I can't access your report. Love to continue, but has to wait until the 1st of November. I wish I have extra income. When money is there, I will come back. Don't have the money right now. I wish I had the extra money to learn more. Right now, I can't afford this. So it's the people who don't have much control in their lives, who are probably a bit poor, struggling, with money who aren't that well educated they're the people who end up buying this shit and that's just not okay with me and I know the other criticism I'm gonna get here people are gonna say it's not numerology that's bullshit you're just following the wrong numerologists right so not all numerologists are good or honest or know what they're doing and numerologists.com are obviously the charlatans in the industry and my response to that would be well maybe except I haven't been able to find any studies that show numerology actually works. I've only been able to find two studies that even investigated it, and neither of those found any positive result. One study was really interesting, actually, they repeated it twice, and they had a numerologist try to determine from basic personal information, like names and birthdays, if the person had a learning disability, like dyslexia or ADHD or autism or anything like that, and the numerologist he couldn't do it, right? His answers prove no better than random guessing. And you'd think that if numerology, right, if it was a real thing, if it was really so powerful, if it was really so insightful, then surely it would be easy to test it. It's supposed to be based on mathematics. Mathematics is the backbone of numerology. I mean, the numbers don't lie, right? So if there are any legit numerologists out there watching this and you feel that I'm misrepresenting your field of expertise, then please, go ahead and volunteer yourself for some scientific studies so we can see some proof that numerology is the powerful, insightful, predictive force that you say it is. Do this and you'll effortlessly achieve your full life path potential. So listen, that's my take on numerology. What do you think? Do you think it's bullshit? Do you think it's legitimate? If you do think it's legitimate, can you point to anything besides personal experience? Have you tried running a report on someone you dislike, on someone you hate, so you can be a bit more objective about it? Let me know, I'd be interested to hear. I'm not writing off numerology completely, but from everything I've looked at, everything I've seen so far, it doesn't look good. It just does not look good. So with that, uh, let's end this video. If you like what you saw, give it a thumbs up. That'd be cool. Uh, subscribe. If you want to help me build this channel, if you want to see more from me, I'd really appreciate your subscription. And be sure to hit the little notifications bell there as well so you'll see the next video from me. And that is it for this week. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. I don't feel that you can be pressured into making decisions, you do not like ultimatums, and can't be easily controlled. You love many different types of people and music. As long as you are stimulated and continually challenged in your life, you will be successful. Look to the future for exciting and new things to come. There will be challenges as well as great opportunities. You are a leader and in control of your destiny. I have no doubt you will be incredibly successful in this life.